In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So I don't know if you noticed it, but in this country, I think we have a bad case of Christmas creep. Christmas creep. What is that? It's when the start of Christmas keeps on creeping earlier and earlier so that retailers and advertisers can leverage the spirit of Christmas for more sales. And that's why there's been Christmas trees at Lowe's for three weeks already. Why every coffee and candle and cocktail is, is holiday cinnamon spiced. And the same 15 bad Christmas pop songs are playing anywhere you go. It's also perhaps the reason for the Harley Davidson Christmas parade that you may have gotten caught in on, uh, coming to church today. But the problem with this Christmas creep is this. As always, it's not a problem with buying or selling. Coffee or cocktails, or any one thing in particular. The only problem with Christmas creep is that it's also mission creep. As with so many things in modern Christian life, what starts with an innocent cinnamon coffee and candle here and there ends up totally burying the original meaning of Christmas in a bunch of stuff. And what began as a long season preparing for the coming of Christ into our, into our worlds with one or two days of commerce now is a long season of commerce with one or two days reflecting on the miracle of Christmas. And what results from that, that danger, is that kind of empty feeling that comes when the decorations dry up and the lights come down. The lights and decorations aren't the problem. The problem is they're no longer illuminating and decorating the one thing needed. Christmas creep is mission creep, mission drift. From a life-changing experience with Christ to a consumer experience, much like what Disney provides. Well, our church and, and all the ancient churches, they seems like they foresaw this problem thousands of years ago, and they have a powerful and life-giving solution to this Christmas creep. And that solution is Advent, which we entered last week. So instead of six or seven weeks of buying and selling, Advent is six or seven weeks of watching and waiting, of fasting and praying, so that we can ready ourselves to receive this greatest gift that the world has ever known, this gift of Christ, and renew this deepest joy and significance of our lives. Now, one last time, this isn't a question of prohibitions, it's a question of priorities. Have your holiday spiced latte. Put dozens of giant inflatable lawn ornaments in your yard, like my neighbor, if you wish. Buy a bunch of gifts for yourselves and your loved ones, you deserve it, but make sure you don't buy into what you're buying. Don't live your life for them. For as Jesus assures us in our Advent readings, one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Let's live our lives for what's permanent, says Jesus, not just for passing pleasures. Keep first things first and second things second. Make sure Christmas is first and foremost for Christ to repeat the words of a beautiful long sermon from Jesus for Advent. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you, about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. And don't keep striving for what you're to eat and what you're to drink, and don't keep worrying, because it's the nations of the world that strive after these things. Your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. The one and only secret to a life well lived is keep the sacred order. Put God first, everything else will follow. Put anything else first, we'll be at odds with God, with each other, with our very lives. Now, pushing back on Christmas creep and finding Christ in Christmas is a long personal process 
because it's as individual and particular as any relationship you have even more. Still though, I want to finish with a few practical suggestions to bring our good thoughts of bringing Christ back into Christmas into our everyday reality. I have three suggestions for you. First, double down on coming to worship. Give your time to the God who formed you and wants to reform you in his image in this season of his good and true and beautiful son. Next, hold on loosely to the things of the season. Instead of buying things, try giving some away. Remember also that the best gift is the gift of yourself. Nothing you can buy, but giving your time to God and the people you love. And finally, finally, come join us this Wednesday for our Advent dinner. It was really designed to combat Christmas creep and remind us all the true reason of the season. And we'll break bread together as a church family, give thanks to God and worship, and hear from four of you about the amazing difference that God makes in our lives. So this Advent, let us leverage this God-given season of prayers and priority and preparation to push back on Christmas creep and its passing promises of satisfaction and comfort. This Advent, we're really offered the only true Christmas gift, and it's nothing money can buy. So let's prepare our hearts and our homes to welcome Christ, our Savior, who transform anything he touches. And in this way, long after we take down those Christmas lights, our hearts will remain aglow with the light of Christ, which will sustain and guide us through all seasons for all time, now and always, and unto the ages of ages.